What happens if you take somebody who is not that young anymore, whose idea of a tough gym session is discovering their AirPods are out of battery, and whose only experience of competitive physical competition was throwing a Wellington boot in a throwing a Wellington boot competition at school when they were 10? What if you take that person by their own admission average and you subject them to months and months of training and then enter them into a series of highly competitive fitness testing events? Will they perform significantly above average? My belief is they will. My wife is not so sure. She'd tell you that herself, but when I said that I'd be describing her as not that young anymore, she got mad and stormed off. If you follow the channel, you'll know that I am often talking about how great it is to be above average at anything you enjoy doing, but particularly in regards to your health and fitness. And given how that is so directly linked to overall physical and mental well-being, there really aren't that many people to whom it doesn't apply. For example, I'm a very below average guitar player. I can't play, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe one day I might find myself on a beach late in the evening around a campfire and think, hmm, if only. But until then, not being able to play doesn't really impact my day-to-day -day life or those around me. In contrast, when my health and fitness was very below average, when I was too fat, eating terribly, not exercising, that did matter. To me, to people close to me, had I stayed that way, it would have ultimately impacted on everybody because I'd have just become another person drawing resources from an overworked health service. Now, very importantly, I've always stressed that above average means just that, be a little bit better than most. It was a philosophy that I adopted when I was entering local 10K fun runs that might have 200 people doing them, and I'd try and be in the top 100. It's not about winning or being an elite athlete. If you want to be that good, amazing. I hope you have a brilliant time doing it. But my belief is that achieving really exceptional results takes an amount of effort and time and commitment that starts to become disproportionate to the rewards for most people. So most people shouldn't bother. If you're thinking, well, hang on a minute, I'm a, I'm a triathlete, I train nine hours a day, I never see my family, but they don't mind, and I've only had four divorces because of it, and so what if I own 16 different types of wetsuit? You should keep doing exactly what you do. Sounds like you love it, but you're abnormal. We need abnormal people, because you're fun to watch on TV at stuff like the Olympics. But most people, and don't forget most people are not in a very good shape at all, they should just focus on getting to that a bit better than most space, where with a moderate amount of effort, they'll achieve brilliant improvements in physical and mental health. However, while that is the message I try and present, I'm often told by people that I'm a bad example of it because I have gone above, above average. And I now have two thoughts on this. The first is this, every time I upload a video where I'm doing something that it could be argued I'm pretty good at, yeah, that is me on a podium in front of a duck pond, I know I'll get those you're above, above average comments. But I also know I'll get Gertrude from Nebraska telling me that she's 65 years old, out of shape, but she's grabbing her dog and they're off for a five mile walk because she's watched the video and is now determined to get fit. And I'm left thinking, great, Gertrude has nailed it. She understands how to see something motivational and use it for herself. She doesn't care about exactly how good I am running a 10K any more than I care about how exactly good Rocky is at boxing. <laughs> Motivation is motivation, and she's motivated, and she's at the door, and the poor dog doesn't know what the hell's going on. But my second thought is this. People might have a point. As I put more and more time into my health and fitness, to where it has now become literally my job on here, I've naturally found myself improving to a point beyond where it is reasonable to expect huge numbers of people to get. That doesn't mean there is a single thing I do that anybody else couldn't do, but it does mean if you took a thousand people who needed to get in shape, and your goal was to get them to my level, to commit to their health and fitness, the time that I do, you'd end up with 20 people crushing it and 980 people just giving up because it's an unrealistic target. Meanwhile, try and get a thousand people to just above average and the majority will achieve it and anybody wanting to go further is of course free to do so. And you'd probably find far more than 20 would go further. So because of this, I've occasionally thought how good it would be if I'd been recording my journey from out of shape to in shape from the beginning, instead of starting it really pretty much at the point that many people would like to get to. Maybe for some people that would make it a little bit more relatable, but without a time machine and no plans to eat myself back to where I once was, although that does sound amazing, it's not gonna happen. But then this happened instead. A few weeks ago, Jen, my beautiful wife, came on one of my Welsh mountain races with me and Nixon. The original plan, which we agreed upon around Christmas, was that she would train at least a little bit so that we'd go into it confident of doing okay. 
What actually happened was that Jen did almost no training and we went into it with me worried she'd last 10 minutes. However, sensing an opportunity of a clickbait title, I called the thing running over a mountain without training and we went for it. Emergency services on standby. It's breaking, she's losing it. And Jen did remarkably well considering a lack of preparation and people seem to enjoy that video and enjoy seeing somebody with a different level of fitness to me doing the things that I do. And then a couple of weeks ago, I competed in London High Rocks and Jen filmed me. And that environment is quite a hard place to be around all day without a bit of it rubbing off on you. And so afterwards, Jen suggested that we compete in the October and November events in the High Rocks Mixed Doubles. I thought, I like that. Hashtag couples goals, that'd be a fun video. My only concern was that we might come dead last. She's not that young anymore, she can't hear me. But that may have been her concern too, because she said, why don't I get a trainer and really work at it properly? So that people can see somebody actually going from below average to above average, as opposed to watching you, because you're actually a bad example of your own philosophy. I was really tempted to tell her about Gertrude and her dog, but I resisted the urge and agreed, so here we are. This video is now to simply explain what our plan is, what events are in the diary. You can also drag Jen in front of the camera in a bit and get a breakdown on where she's at right now, what can she do, what can't she do, because I already know from the mountain running video some people are already saying above average before she's even started, and then just get her thoughts on what's ahead, and this will then serve as a video number one, really, in what will hopefully be a series of videos over the coming months showing the transformation, her upgrade into Gen 2.0. Obviously, mix it in with all the stuff that I'll be doing as normal, Zwift, cycling, running, the gym, so on. And before I run through the plan, if you're a channel regular and wondering whether the movie clip of choice to insert right now would be one from Weird Science, Jenna said that would be very inappropriate because it would imply that I was somehow the one responsible for creating any change that occurs in her, and those changes would be for my own selfish benefit. She said this was about her choosing to undergo this process. She is the one conducting the experiment on herself, effectively. It is not being conducted upon her. You have to want to change for you. I said, fair enough. Sounds like a clip from the fly would be more appropriate. She didn't like that either. Right, so the plan is simple. We have five events in the diary over the next year. We have Jen in the condition that she's in right now, details on that in a second, and we have the amazing services of Jade Skillin, who is gonna be Jen's coach for the next 12 months. Jade is a High Rocks master coach. She's competed at the top level in Spartan obstacle course races and High Rocks, of course. She's got a bunch of podiums to her name and an even bigger bunch of podiums that she's got for her clients. Do you need somebody of that caliber to demonstrate that most people, irrespective of where they start, can leapfrog to a really good level of fitness? No, of course you don't. But what we're trying to do here is condense into the next year what it took me about 10 years to do, thus showing you a sort of fast track version of A to B. Jade will hopefully make that more likely to happen. And to be honest, as I'm always saying on here, I haven't really got a clue about training. I just know what I like. A slightly more professional approach seems sensible. <laughs> So what are the five events? First up in July, we have Spartan Obstacle Course Race. Jen has entered into the age group women's heats. This isn't really much of a target, it's just something that seemed like fun to do. I was doing the event anyway, so Jen thought she'd just tag along. It's not far away, a couple of months now. It'll be interesting to see how Jen does, but not expecting amazing results after just such a short period of training. And then the two big ones, High Rocks Birmingham, High Rocks London in October and November, mixed doubles. I guess the hope will be that the first event will highlight any shortcomings so that we can then nail it in the second. And then in January, High Rocks Manchester, Jen is gonna do her first solo event in the Women's Open. And lastly, date's not yet been announced, but the expectation is there'll be an April event as well as there was this year. Jen hasn't completely decided yet, but it's possible she will enter the Women's Pro Heats then. If she does that, and does even just okay from where she is now, that will be an incredible reflection on Jade's coaching, Jen's hard work, and most importantly, the human body's ability to adapt and improve to what you throw at it. So where is she right now? Let's go get her. What? <laughs> it just seems weird that you'd interview your wife. Well, I'm interviewing you for the benefit of people at home. Right, go for it then. So this is a few questions with Jen. I have a few things written down that I think is worth covering, and I'm gonna fire them at Jen, uh, talk show styly. Because we've never done a talk show on here before. Ready? Okay, so, name. Hey. Well, I thought we'd start by, you know. Jen. 
Jen, YouTube, YouTube Jen. Difficult guest already. Okay, I'm allowed to ask these because it's health and fitness. Uh, age? 33. That's really quite young. Height and weight? 5'6", so is that like 168 I'll, I'll, centimetres? I'll convert. Don't, okay. don't. Uh, weight, 55 kilograms. So your height's in imperial, but your weight's in metric. It did whatever. Previous competitive sports history. What have you done? Because people will say, especially after you're running across the mountain, what, what have you competed in physically? So as an adult, nothing. Nothing. Park runs, a few. The runs that you do with me, so the Wales one. We've done three or four uh, fun runs with the dogs, but I don't think we approach them competitively, do we? No, definitely not. Um, but then as a child, I was quite into my um, PE back then. I did it for GCSEs. That's the, that's the qualification in physical. Yeah. Although activity. I did get, I think I got a D. Okay, so you <laughs> failed, so failed PE. I don't know how much lower we can go. So nothing. You have no competitive physical history. No, just. As a I child. mentioned the welly wanging thing already. That's top. We're discounting that. Okay. Previous exercise, you clearly exercised before. Would you say you exercised on a regular basis? No. No, not at all. Casual gym going. Casual gym going. Two or three times a week, maybe? With a, with a, with a dedicated plan of what you're doing when you get there? No. No, just whatever machine's free. Uh, running, you, you, but you, you ran across a mountain. What's your, your, your running? How often are you running a week? The, the park run that I just did this week was the third park run I've ever done. And right. up to that, this year I've probably run about 10 times, maybe? Can't be that many times. I think it's about eight. Eight. <laughs> Jen's run eight times this year. And we did do a park run. Actually, that was my next thing. Jen's done three park runs in her life. Did the most recent one recently. What did you get, 20? 29.30 something. 29.30 something. The target was to get under half an hour, which she did. So you're um, actually about an average park runner. The average time for park run is about 28 and a half minutes. So Jen's an average park runner. Oh, we also did a ramp test on the bike. How did you find the ramp test on the bike? I hate cycling. Jen doesn't do cycling at all. The purpose of doing the ramp test was almost because she doesn't do cycling. The idea was that it, any improvement that we see in a ramp test result can't come down to being a better cyclist because you're not going to do any cycling, are you? No, just the small amount that's within my training programme, but... Is there any? Going to be any? Well, I did like 30 seconds the other day. Okay. Aside from the old 30 second cycle ride, there's going to be no cycling. So any improvement in the ramp test result will purely be down to fitness alone. So it'll be interesting to see whether Jen's FTP on the ramp test goes up over the coming months, just as her fitness goes up. Should do. How inspiring is it to be married to someone like Mark Lewis, YouTube fitness influencer? <laughs> Um, we tested your maximum lifts in the gym for, what did you have to do? You did bench press, uh, back squat, shoulder press, deadlift. deadlift. That was it, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So we did those four exercises because Jade wanted to see what the starting point was for strength. Um, and they'll also improve over time, but we've got a starting point for those. We also did some before and after photographs. Physical appearance is not the objective here at all for high rocks obviously uh it's it's results but it will still be interesting to see how physical appearance changes if at all what are you most excited about the most exciting part yeah to me in my head and i realize this is probably not how it works podium it's got a podium no getting on a podium no okay <laughs> i don't forward to the fact that if i'm working out every day i can eat i can eat more <laughs> and the podium <laughs> Well, actually, if you get on a podium, if you stand on a podium one day, oh, as I have done um, in front of a duck pond, <laughs> surely that would be exciting, wouldn't it? That would be extremely exciting. Yeah, exciting. Having never, I don't think I've ever stood on a podium. No? No. Was there no podium at the welly wanging competition? It's worth pointing out, I think, because some people will say Jen is already in good shape and therefore is already above a starting point that many people will find themselves in. To a certain extent, we're somewhat stuck. Jen hates me using cars as an analogy for people, but let's do it anyway. <laughs> Jen is like a car that has been purchased and not modified to make it faster. There's no kind of fast and furious alterations gone on. 
but neither have you been like wrecked and unserviced and 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 that's what most people are most people are um just bag of shit cars that that haven't been looked after jen's just a like it came out the showroom with a bit of wear and tear like a like a car should be so you're going to go from there to fast and furious and everyone driving around in a piece of shit is saying well hang on a minute, that's not fair well you know you could have serviced your car you so jen is actually not above average she's just where a human being should be if they haven't yet chosen to wreck themselves um that'd be a good description wouldn't it yeah living one mile at a time like that, it, it's, right? it's so close. Sorry. It's quarter mile at the time. Oh, so close. Uh, I suggest you leave the movie clips <laughs> to me. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. Okay, I think we're done uh, with Jen. Uh, you can you can go now. You you go again. Charge your earpods or something probably. Thank you. So that is it for now. Future videos will cover what Jen is eating, what her train looks like, and obviously some feedback from her on how she is finding it all. Her Instagram is in the description down below if you want to follow her journey more closely. All the events we are doing are on the website, also linked down below. And hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on here. And lastly, if you're thinking, hang on, all this talk about Jen doing this herself, being the one in control of the steps she's taking, it still sounds like you're using your YouTube channel, your influence to at least steer your already amazing wife in the direction of becoming some sort of enhanced version of what she currently is, from which you must benefit. You're effectively creating an athlete that you get to be married to. What does Jen get? A, have you not seen the Duck Pond video? And B, I know, it's literally like weird science.